reading from the Gospel of Mark. Jesus and his disciples went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority, not as the scribes. Just then there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying out with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed and kept on asking one another, What is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. So when was the last time you were totally, completely, and utterly dumbfounded? Speechless, awestruck, shocked, had your socks totally knocked off. But not in a bad way, not in a, I can't believe we're still in the middle of this pandemic and have suffered all this loss and, and I just don't have anything meaningful to say about it because I can't really conceptualize it. Not in that kind of way, but when was the last time you were awestruck by something good rather than bad? Something pure rather than evil? Something full of life? rather than full of death. Sometimes I wonder if we haven't gotten so used to being dumbstruck and astounded and shocked by hardship, tragedy, and trauma that exist in our world, particularly in the past year, that we've forgotten what it feels like to have our socks knocked off by something lovely, by something holy, by something joyful. You know, I'd like to say that it's something that we can cultivate in our spiritual lives, almost how we can cultivate a sense of wonder through intentional gratitude and purposefully slow, slowing down and noticing the gifts of God and creation around us. But, but I think there's something different about being awestruck and having a sense of wonder because when you're astounded by God, it almost feels like a gift you weren't expecting and you certainly didn't earn and that you couldn't do anything about to bring about on your own. To me, it's almost like the difference between watching a deer on a foggy morning from your front porch and, and being in wonder about it and then going on a morning walk and almost stumbling on that deer in a dense fog. And, and, and then the deer bolts off, and then your heart skips a beat, and as you finally settle down, you don't know who was more startled, you or the deer, but suddenly you're awestruck. And your senses are more alive in a way that they weren't just a moment before. Suddenly you can almost feel the individual droplets of moisture on your cheeks in the fog. Suddenly you can smell the dirt in the evergreen. Suddenly you can taste the coldness of the morning, and, and like an epiphany almost, you realize again, anew, afresh, that the world is God's. That God created it, and called it good, and loved it and everything in it into being. And that the very same God who spoke the world into existence, spoke you into existence. That the very same God who loved the world loves you too. That the very same God who knows the names and depths and purposes of all things knows your name too. And so for the briefest of moments, perhaps, the scariness of the world recedes and the light shines through. And maybe you want to say something deep or profound or eloquent to capture that moment so that you can bottle it and take it with you and, and uncork it the next time the murk of life seems to get too thick. But you can't really because that's not, that's not the way being astounded works. It's not, the way it, it's not the way it works when goodness rather than evil leaves you 
at a loss, a loss for words, a loss, a holy loss. That's something of what I think is happening in the synagogue in Capernaum when Jesus teaches and cast out the unclean spirit. It said that the people are, are utterly amazed, that they are astounded. And the word used to indicate being astounded means literally to be taken out of yourself, your, your own self-possession. It's almost as if you're shaken loose of your own consciousness. You aren't just speechless. You're almost thoughtless. Here in his teaching and in his casting out of evil, Jesus reminds these people who live on the margins, who live under the thumb of military occupation, who live on that razor's edge between barely making it and going completely hungry, that there is something greater than the evil, the trouble, and the hardship of this world to remind them that love does in the end win. And so they glimpse in Jesus, even for a moment, the restoration of all things, how God intended creation. They glimpse the future. They glimpse for a moment the hope of God. And they're startled awake by it. They see the world and maybe themselves anew. New possibilities emerge. Truly, there are no words to capture such a moment, but I bet they'll spend the rest of their lives trying to. And in doing so, they'll be reminded that even when times are tough, of the time that pure evil bowed down to pure good, of the time that pure pain gave way to pure blessing and healing, of the time pure chaos gave way to pure beauty. And it'll be enough. It'll be enough even if it's the only moment like it they ever experience. It'll be enough because in it they'll realize that nothing will ever again be enough. Until the kingdom of earth and the kingdom of heaven become one once again as it did in that moment. My prayer for us this week is that in the midst of our everyday lives, in the midst of the, the struggle, in the midst of the sin and the evil that can infect the world, that we are nevertheless startled awake, that we are astounded by the loveliness of God. Amen.